one of the things that could be very key today is that our workflow involves hybrid manufacturers. So we've obviously had our first presentation with DISC, our second presentation primarily on cloud, and we're going to do a thir third presentation now, which is actually going to take us down to LTO tape, into a LTFS format for this one, Dave? Uh, can be, LTFS, TAR, whatever. So now we're, we're going to integrate PAM solution with an Avid Interplay. We're going to promote and demote our archive through object matrix for our tier two storage. We're going to go to our archive layer through SEN, and we're going to use an interface technology called NL Tech. And our role in this is about integrating and customizing these setups for every installation. Every installation we do today is a unique, customized installation, and that's obviously where we can add significant value to that, and then we can provide the support to continue that. So I'm going to hand you straight over to Dave from Route 6, who's going to give us a, a demo of this workflow. Can you just move this way so you can film it? Okay. Great. Okay, Dave. Right. Yes. So, uh, yes, hello. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is, is using uh, Avid Interplay as the sort of asset management of the PAM, which uh, there's a couple of sessions this afternoon covering more of that in depth. Zendata is the uh, archive management side that looks after some tier two storage and the LTO mechanism. And then NL Tech is the web services communication between uh, basically Avid and Zendata. Um, so I thought the first thing we'd do is just sort of look at the hardware. So downstairs we've got our ISIS 5000, which is at the bottom, which is our storage, uh, an Interplay engine, and then an uh, Interplay uh, central server. Um, and then in the archive side, we've got our uh, Zendata um, server with some internal storage, which forms the tier two storage. And then uh, we've got our tape library, which is all managed within the Zendata uh, infrastructure. It doesn't have to be Spectrologic, it's agnostic to tape library. So if you sort of put those side by side and break those down into uh, a traditional PowerPoint. Um, so our tier one storage is our expensive ISIS um, production, real-time playback uh, storage. Our tier two is our Zendata, which is a sort of a lower grade disk, so it's uh, more cost effective. And then our tier three is our LTO uh, library. And then the workflow that we're going to do is from um, our access and interplay, we're going to request uh, an archive of some content, which will go into the interplay infrastructure. Then there'll be some web services uh, communication, which is a protocol between uh, multiple manufacturers. Um, and then that will tell us where our Avid uh, MXF Media is residing. So that'll be on our disk, which is our ISIS 5000. We'll manage uh, the migration to our lower grade disks of the data. Um, and then it'll also go down to our uh, LTO tape at the bottom. And then as you can see here, that was our archive request. Um, sorry. So that's our sort of archiving um, workflow. So we had the same data in three positions. Um, now typically you'd delete it from your high uh, your fast online storage, which is expensive, so then you'd start bringing in your next productions, um, and then you'd delete it from your tier two storage and it, your content will reside in your archive. So you know a year later, two years later, you may want that production back. Um, so then the archive would be um, requested as a restore from the interplay, you'd search for your assets, and then the workflow would basically go back the other way. Um, so you'd have your data uh, moving back from your, your LTO tape, back up to your tier two, and then back up onto your tier one, which is where people would edit um, your work. And then once that's done, you again, you know, delete it, and it always resides in your archive. Um, so the key point there is that your users only use the interplay to find where their content is, be it on whichever tier of storage. Um, so I'll just take you through uh, the system. So what I've got here is this is just um, a remote desktop to our uh, Zendata server downstairs. Um, it runs Windows 2008. So this is our tier two storage here, which is uh, seven terabytes of uh, internal uh, RAID 5 storage. And then our tape library is connected to that as well, which is downstairs. Um, so Zendata basically is a file system from the top. If you look at the very top, you've got your X drive, which is your local cache. And at the very bottom here, we've got our single drive at the bottom. So it's a filter. And what actually happens is the data sort of comes in at the top, goes through our policies in the middle here, hits our tapes in there, and ends up on the drive at the bottom. So I'll just quickly explain um, some, some, some points of that. Because there's different file configuration groups, you can have different sets of rules and um, uh, retention rules uh, depending on what area you use of that cache drive. So at the 
this file path at the top here is where the data that's going to be arriving from the interplay infrastructure, we're going to be saving it to tape and we're going to be saving it to the set of tapes added interplay 002. The reason why they call them volume sets is if you explicitly said we're going to write our data to this one tape, once that tape gets full, we have to manually go and find another tape and load that tape in. So what Zen Data do is they have the volume set and all you have to do is you have to add in one blank tape to start with. And as long as you've got blank tapes in this blank tape pool at the bottom, the library will self-load as you fill up the first tape, it'll grab the second tape, the third tape, and so on. So as long as you've got blank tapes within your library, it's self-managed. And I think that's a, a good point to sort of take home. So if we have a look at our um, uh, volume set here, we've got our barcode, um, our, uh, barcode tape which has already been used. We can set here, uh, we can configure it into the file format which was discussed earlier about TAR and LTFS. So what Zendata, Zendata have done with LTFS is through their software they've been able to uh, manage the spanning of uh, media or assets across tapes which you can't natively do with LTFS. So using the LTFS format they can manage you know, the spanning of tapes. Um, also, you can um, create replication. So, if you look at this Archive 02 volume set, um, you can see here we've got replication. So, we're actually writing the same set of data to two sets of tape, uh, two tapes within the same volume set, and this gets replicated at 2 a.m. every morning. So, that could be your disaster recovery. That if one fail, one tape fails, you've still got your second tape. You could have that as an offsite backup. So, that enables you to do that sort of side from from the Zen data. So that's just a quick overview of what's going to happen when we start pushing our stuff from uh, Interplay. So Interplay access is the um, sort of the front end of Interplay. Um, from a management point of view, there's a couple of other tools, um, Access and Central, which is going to be shown um, later. Sorry, Assist and Central, which is going to be shown later. But the, um, the background to sort of uh, the Interplay is it's a database. Um, and you can see on the left hand side here we've got our database tree. I'm logged in as an administrator so I can see all of the, the projects. But typically you'd have all your different projects and uh, production companies or customers down here. But a little bit further up we get these extra watch folders which are uh, uh, NL Tech Nearchive uh, watch folders. So this is how we've moved data to and from um, the different tiers of storage. Um, so within Interplay, um, Sort of the, the, the whole idea behind Interplay is it's searchable, it's a database. You don't have to start you know, diving through folders looking for content. So if I just search for something, I know there's quite a few little bits of. So I've just done a simple um, search, which is uh, Supersport. And I know from here, that's a category, it's a race series within um, some custom metadata that's been added in here, which is, uh, you can see here, is sort of a, a drop-down um, box, so that's why that's come up. So I find my asset there that I want to archive, so let's choose this uh, Platform 1 Race 4. So I'm happy you know, that that project's finished. I'm only using small clips because it'll take quite a while to archive off to LTO. So I just copy that asset and then I move over to here where it says store media and I paste this asset into here. And what, what that's done is the, the web surface communication between our avid environment to our archiving environment. So if I dive back to our Zen data and if I look at the very bottom here, there's a sort of a log of what's going on. As you can see here, we've written at uh, 1219, 1218, we've got right succeeded. So these are actually the MXF files that are being written to the tape now. X is the cache, and then you've got drive zero, which is our physical tape drive. So what it's done now, then it's moved the data from our ISIS 5000 to our tier two storage, and now it's sitting on an LTO tape downstairs. So I can go back to my, um, go back to my access window. Uh, I can look at this asset here. So as from a user's point of view, there's no difference at the moment. I can right click on it and I can say I want to delete that clip. And I want to just delete the media at this point. Um, so I select delete the media, I select OK, and then you can see here down the bottom that asset has gone red. Um, so now that asset doesn't belong or doesn't have a home on the ISIS 5000. It only exists in the archive world. But if someone still searches again for Supersport, this clip will come up, but you'll get the red logo as you can see just down here. So saying it's offline. If we look at the file locations, you can see it says offline. Now in six months time, a uh, year's time, I want to restore that. Again, I search for that clip and I just go back to restore media. 
and I'll select paste and that goes in. So currently at the moment they're developing um, with uh, Avid's uh, API to be able to use the archive and um, move uh, functions, but those currently have only been available directly with Avid. Um, so a little bit further here, so instead of having a write to the X drive, we've got an access, meaning someone's trying to retrieve that data. Now all being well, I should be able to right click, so if we go back to our super support, if I say uh, update status for meter indexer, it should go green, meaning it's all back online. So that's back now on our ISIS 5000. So that's just showing the whole movement of data from our fast, expensive online storage all the way down to LTO tape and then bringing it back up. And of course you can do that on folders and sequences, um, but I've just chosen a small clip, otherwise we'll be here quite a while. Thank you. Cool, thank you, David.